What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and welcome to another Super Saf style camera comparison this time between the Huawei P20 Pro and the iPhone X. Now in the usual style we'll be looking at both the front and rear facing cameras and our images as well as video too. Do also look out for the audio icon in the corner of the screen and that will indicate to you which device the audio is coming from and I'll be switching between these two throughout this video to give you guys a better idea of the differences in audio as well. So we're currently using the front facing cameras, we're outdoors, we've got good light and we're just testing out the stabilization, so taking a walk. Now let's go ahead and run. Go we can see what the dynamic range is like and we'll move on to the rear facing cameras now. Right, so now we've switched over to the rear facing cameras, we are filming at 4K. Uh, with the iPhone 10, we can use the optical zoom at 4K, so we can get in twice as close. I cannot see an option to optically zoom a while at 4K on the P20 Pro. But anyway, so 4K right now, and we're gonna go ahead and test out the stabilization. So uh, let's go ahead and walk. Now we're going to run. Still at 4K, 30 frames a second. Now just to test out stabilization at 1080p on both devices. So 1080p, 30 frames a second. Let's run. We've now moved to a slightly different location so we can uh, test out the 4k video again now i did say earlier on that uh, we do not have uh, optical zoom on the p20 pro when we are filming video but uh, we can pinch to zoom now there isn't any sort of zoom option so i've currently pinched to zoom we're at five times now uh, this is around three times and this is around one, so you can pinch to zoom. I'm not sure if that pinch to zoom is using uh, optical zoom or if it's using digital zoom. As far as I can see right now, it does seem to be uh, digital zoom, so just bear that in mind. Testing out the autofocus on the P20 Pro. Very, very fast indeed. Same autofocus test, this time on the iPhone 10. Also very fast. So that was the video. Now before we move on to images, just looking at what we're working with here. For the front facing cameras, the P20 Pro has a massive 24 megapixels versus seven megapixels on the iPhone 10. On the rear-facing cameras, we've got dual cameras on the iPhone 10, both 12 megapixels. One is wide angle and one is a telephoto. And on the P20 Pro, we've got a triple camera setup. There's a 40 megapixel RGB camera, an eight megapixel telephoto camera, as well as a 20 megapixel monochrome camera. The sensor size on the P20 Pro is also 223% larger compared to the iPhone 10, and this should really help in low light. So starting off with some selfies, you can see that the P20 Pro does have a wider angle of view, and the image overall does seem a little bit brighter, but it does look quite soft compared to the iPhone 10, which is sharper. Now remember we do have 24 megapixels on the P20 Pro so we can crop in much further compared to the iPhone 10. But once again you'll notice that my skin does look quite soft. Now I have switched off beauty mode but regardless it still does tend to soften the skin. This is something that I've noticed with the P20 Pro. Now testing out the portrait mode from the front facing cameras, the iPhone 10 does have a better dynamic range here. However, the edge detection is so, so bad on the iPhone. This is something that I've been saying for a long time. The edges of my face as well as my hair have been blurred out and this is something that shouldn't be so difficult because we are against a plain background. The P20 Pro, although the highlights have been blown out in the background, the edge detection does seem better overall. Now I don't think either of these are doing an amazing job, but I still think that the Pixel 2 has the best front facing camera when it comes to portrait selfies. Now trying out some selfies in low light, the P20 Pro 
doing much, much better here. The iPhone 10, we can barely see my face, but on the P20 Pro, it actually looks like a pretty decent selfie considering the low light situation. Now trying out the front facing flash, once again, the P20 Pro doing much better here. The image is much brighter. You've got less noise and you can also see the background. With the iPhone 10, things are very, very dull. Now moving on to some outdoor shots. So firstly, we've got this macro shot here, both doing an absolutely great job. You can see lots of detail, slight differences in colors. The colors seem to pop a little bit more on the P20 Pro. And if we do go in 100%, remember we've got 40 megapixels on the P20 Pro, so you can crop in much further. And you can get all of those details on those droplets. The iPhone 10 isn't doing bad at all, but with the 40 megapixels of the P20 Pro, you are going to be able to crop in further. Now an outdoor wide shot here, the iPhone 10 seems to have overall better dynamic range. We've not lost much detail in the clouds, but the foreground is much brighter compared to the P20 Pro. Now this image was taken at 40 megapixels with the P20 Pro, but then if we switch to 10 megapixels, you can see that the dynamic range is better compared to 40 megapixels. It's only slightly, but the image is also a little bit sharper, so it does have more processing happening. But overall, I still prefer the image on the iPhone 10. I just think that the details have been better maintained in the shadows. Now, if we use the telephoto zoom on both cameras, we've got two times on the iPhone 10, but we've got three times on the P20 Pro, so you can get in much closer. In addition to that, you also have five times hybrid zoom on the P20 Pro, so you can get in much closer and you can see this ice cream van, which I didn't really even notice in the initial shot. Now, if you go in 100%, you can see that we can get in much, much closer on the P20 Pro and that is thanks to that hybrid zoom. Now I wanted to test out the dynamic range further so you can see that we've got the sun or whatever we can see of it in the background. Now the sun is a little bit more blown out on the iPhone 10 compared to the P20 Pro, but the foreground is also brighter on the iPhone 10. If you look towards the trees, details of those trees have been maintained better on the iPhone 10 compared to the P20 Pro. Now let's move on to the portrait mode. So the first thing is that on the iPhone 10, it does use the telephoto camera to capture this. So this means you're gonna be getting a different angle of view compared to the wide angle camera on the P20 Pro. So I actually had to get my brother who's shooting this to come in much closer on the P20 Pro to get a similar angle of view. In terms of edge detection, both are doing absolutely great, but I do prefer the colors on the P20 Pro a little bit more compared to those of the iPhone 10. There's also some clipping on the highlights on my forehead on the iPhone 10, but I don't really like that angle of view on the P20 Pro. It is a little bit too wide, so it kind of stretches everything and it's not too flattering, but you can use the three times optical zoom to apply the same portrait mode. And here the angle of view is so much better. Edge detection is also great and colors are still okay, but the image is starting to seem a little bit soft. Now moving on to another portrait mode image, once again, to match that angle of view, I had to get my brother to move in much closer on the P20 Pro. Edge detection is great on both, I really can't fault them. But once again, I do prefer the colors on the P20 Pro compared to those of the iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 is looking quite yellow and there has been some detail lost on my nose as well as on my forehead. But the P20 Pro, once again, a little bit soft. I do think there's some sort of beauty mode happening here, even though it was set down to zero. Now, once again, trying out the three times optical zoom to match a similar angle. Now look at the difference here. If we go back, you can see that it's definitely not flattering and it does stretch things out. But using that three times optical zoom does give you a much better angle of view. And edges are great, but once again, it is a little bit soft. And the colors are not as good as they were on the wide angle camera. But personally, I still prefer this to the yellowish colors on the iPhone 10. I think this is gonna come down to your personal preference. Now let's move on to low light. This is something that I know a lot of you guys wanna look at. Now this is an almost pitch black indoors. Now neither of these are doing a good job here, but with the P20 Pro, you do have the night mode. And when we use this, this actually takes a longer exposure and you can see that it's doing a much, much better job. Going in 200%, we can clearly see the text on this little toy, whereas this has been lost on the iPhone 10. Now carrying on the low light test outdoors, once again, the P20 Pro because of the night mode and the larger sensor is doing a much better job. You've got a much brighter image with much less noise. Final test outdoors in low light, the same situation here, you've got a brighter image with less noise. If we go in 200%, you can see in the sky, there is so much more noise on the iPhone 10, whereas this is much lower on the P20 Pro 
and the image is also sharper overall. So there we have it guys, the super SAS style camera comparison between the Huawei P20 Pro versus the iPhone 10. For the front facing camera, the iPhone 10 was sharper and I did think it had slightly better dynamic range, but the P20 Pro was wider with lots more resolution and I think it does have a better portrait mode, although it is quite soft because of that beauty mode, even though it was set all the way down to zero. Now, another problem with beauty mode is that when you go to the front facing camera video, by default, it is at 720p and I couldn't find a way to change this. You actually have to press on the small face icon in the corner of the screen and that switches off beauty mode for video and then and only then can you film at 1080p from the front facing camera. This is very, very bad user interface. And initially when I did the test, I actually filmed everything at 720p because I thought that's the maximum you can do it. And others have had this same situation. I really think Huawei need to improve on this beauty mode and allow people to switch it off completely if they choose to do so. But after that was done for the front facing camera video, the P20 Pro was definitely more stable. It does crop in to achieve the stabilization, so it's not as wide, but I do think I prefer the video from it overall. For low light selfies, the clear winner was the P20 Pro. And for images from the rear facing cameras, I think both were good in good light. Of course, you do have the option of cropping in because of the 40 megapixels on the P20 Pro. And you also have better zoom, up to five times hybrid zoom, compared to two times optical zoom on the iPhone 10. However, I did prefer the dynamic range overall on the iPhone 10. And for low light, the P20 Pro was definitely the winner with brighter images, less noise. And this is thanks to the larger sensor size, which is more than double of the iPhone 10. For the portrait mode, I think both were really good in terms of edge detection, but I did prefer the colors overall on the P20 Pro, but images overall was slightly soft on the P20 Pro. And this once again, comes down to that beauty mode. Now for video overall, I'd have to give the one to the iPhone 10. There is no stabilization at 4K for the P20 Pro. This is something that I've found that Huawei seemed to neglect quite a bit uh, on previous models as well. And although the 1080p video from the P20 Pro was much more stable, it was very, very soft. The iPhone also has the advantage of 4K at 60 frames a second, which I couldn't really demonstrate in this video because it is at 30 frames a second. So if you are somebody who likes taking a lot of video, then the iPhone 10 is gonna be the better option. Autofocus, I think both were similar, very, very good and fast. And for slow motion, you do have up to 960 frames a second at 720p on the P20 Pro, but you've got 1080p at 240 frames a second on the iPhone 10. So I think this is gonna come down to your personal preference. For the audio recording, I did prefer the P20 Pro. It does have stereo recording compared to mono on the iPhone 10. You can go back and have a listen if you'd like. That's what I think anyway. What do you think? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know. Also let me know which Super SAF style camera comparison you'd like me to do next. If you wanna see lots of different images from lots of different devices, then give me a follow on Instagram. I'm at Super SAF. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe and switch your notifications. There's lots more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time.